here are some great tips for beginning to research your genealogy and your family history. My name is Mary. I'm an amateur genealogist. I've been researching my family for 20 years. This video will help you begin to research your family. While the amount of information online is growing daily, there are still gems to be found in the physical records. Your library is a good place to start. If it has a genealogy department, you found a gold mine. The volunteers there will be eagle, eager to help you get started. If the library does not have a genealogy department, look to the card catalog to find things that are pertinent to your search. For online research, there's much more available than can be found on the big genealogy search engines. There are many state and regional genealogical societies, and most of them can be found online. There are societies focused on a specific state or nationality. There are even societies focused on a single surname, and the list goes on. The big three genealogy websites and search engines are Ancestry, Family Search, and MyHeritage. Although they all have different user interfaces, the procedures and functions are very similar. This short demonstration was made using Ancestry.com. You may be tempted to enter all of the information that you know but sometimes less is more. By entering the first name and middle name, you will exclude those records that have only initials. If you specify Thomas James Jones, you will miss the records that have only his initials, TJ Jones. Try entering just the surname and the year of birth. Once you see the search results, you can add more information to help narrow down the results. So we'll enter just the surname Washington and a birth date of 1840. Click the search button and see what kind of results we get. Washington is apparently a very common name and 22 million results is so unwieldy we'd never be able to deal with it. So let's edit our search. The first name of the person we are looking for is Jane, and we know that Jane lived in Virginia. So let's enter those two things. When I type in Virginia, you will notice that I get a list of several Virginias. Some of them are cities in different states. Let's click on Virginia, USA to select the state of Virginia. Now we'll click on search and look at the results. We still have far too many results. But let's leave it at that for now and take a look at the categories. On the left side of the screen, you'll see a list of categories. Each of these has subcategories. Marriage, birth, and deaths breaks down into three categories. Military has many categories. Court, land, wills, and financial has a lot of categories. There's a lot of information that can be found here. Let's look at the marriage record for Jane Washington, married to John James. When we click on that, we'll get the detail of the record. This is the information we're looking for. If we scroll down, we will see that we also have the source of the information detailed for us. This is important. 
we have specific information about Jane's marriage, and we also know where it came from. Pretty much all we need for now. So what do you do with this information? If you're keeping only paper records, write down the result and the citation. We'll cover citations next. If you're using software on your computer, write down the results and citation and enter them into your software. If you're using an online genealogy site for your tree, you will be given an opportunity to add the search result to your tree. The citation will automatically be included. A few words about source citations. Every fact that is not public knowledge needs a source citation. A citation has two parts, what it is and where it's from. At first, some may be very casual, family lore, second-hand knowledge, educated guess. But as you gather more facts, citations need to be more specific and detailed. Professional genealogist Elizabeth Schoen Mills has written the books on this topic. Her book for beginners is Evidence, Citation, and Analysis for the Family Historian. One advantage of using online genealogy sites is that when a search finds a fact or document and you add it to your tree, it will automatically include the appropriate source citation. All of the computer-based software has specific places for you to enter source citations. Census data may be the most important data you will find. It will guide you to other sources such as immigration information and vital statistics. Beginning in 1790, the United States conducted a nationwide census every 10 years. Until 1850, it counted only households, naming the head of the household and just a count of others in the family. The 1790 census listed the head of household and then a count of free white males aged 16 and older, free white males under 16, free white females, all other persons, and slaves. Beginning in 1850, the census listed every family individual in the household. There was a separate census of slaves. It gave name, age, gender, occupation, place of birth, and the value of real estate if the home was owned. The late 1880s had a large influx of immigrants. In 1900, the Census Bureau asked when they arrived in the U.S. and whether they had become naturalized citizens. Census data is kept confidential for 72 years to try to ensure personal privacy. The last available census data is from the 1940 census. Without exception, we have access to most of this. There are, however, some limitations when looking at census data. Some of the limitations of census data include incompleteness. Early on, the time limits placed on the census takers meant that sometimes there was not enough time to get to every household, or the census takers simply missed them. Indifferent or incompetent personnel. Some were just careless. Many were not well qualified and did not meet the standards. It was an extremely low paying job, which did not attract many well qualified people. Incorrect information give, given by family and others. Sometimes the person giving the information did not know exactly when father immigrated or when mother was born. A child, as the information giver, could have made guesses. If no one was home, the census taker may have asked a neighbor for information. Reluctance. 
Some people may have intentionally avoided being counted. Depending on where an immigrant came from, it's possible they could have a fear of government officials. Language was also a limitation. Recent European immigrants may have had accents that were very difficult to understand. The census taker may have guessed at the spelling of surnames, especially Eastern and Central European names. Careless handwriting, poor spelling, ink that has faded over time all contribute to the difficulty of extracting. Be open-minded about names, legibility, and language differences may be responsible for some inadvertent errors. Nicknames may have been recorded rather than birth names. Lena may be for Pauline, Betty and Liz and Lily for Elizabeth, for example. First names may be changed just because of personal preference. There are multiple correct spellings of some names, Nicholas, for example, or Smith, S-M-I-T-H, S-M-Y-T-H, S-M-Y-T-H-E. Immigrants may have changed the surname for a number of reasons. Difficult pronunciation or spelling, just to seem more American, or on a whim, or fear. Ethnic bias, especially in the period leading up to World War II, many Germans changed their names to something more Americanized. Or there may be fear of reprisal for past actions or activities. After you've looked at the facts on the census page, take a look at more information, see what you can infer. Check the pages before and after the person you found. Are there people with the same name nearby? Relatives? What was the neighborhood like? Were they single family homes, apartment buildings, boarding houses? Were multiple generations living together? Did surnames and or birthplaces indicate a predominant nationality? Were there many children or few per family? What kinds of jobs did people have? If a married woman has children with a different surname, it could be her second marriage. If a couple has have been married for three years, but there are five children, again, it's likely a second marriage. Did they move often or never? Did occupations change over time? Census data is the core of our online research. We've looked at searching the online databases. We've looked at the census, but there's more. The next video will show other online resources to take your research even further. Please leave a question or a comment. Subscribe if you'd like to be notified when the next video is available. See you next time. Thanks for watching.